Okay, um, do you want to dive now, Kieran, into the actual draft terms of reference, which is really talking about what we're actually doing here and really opening up the discussion around what are, what's the purpose, the objective, and some of the outcomes which we'd like to hope for this community practice. Yeah. All right. Um, so in the in the meet in the notes document, you'll see a link to the draft um, in terms of reference. Um, so I just wanted to really quickly go through that, uh, open it up for some comments and, and feedback on that one. So, uh, okay. Uh, so the intention of this is, we've already said, that, um, is to get this group together to be able to uh, share experiences and findings. Uh, the the main objective as we, Michael and I and the others have pulled together is to connect the people to get uh, people in the geospatial data uh, and, and associated tools and services and anyone who's working in that space. Uh, specifically, well, we're not looking at the commercial sector, uh, but we are interested in the, in the research and, and the uh, government sector in there. Um, and, and really be a place for, for discussion around those ones and, and sharing of ideas. Um, the we're looking at um, in in terms of meetings we're hoping that most of it would probably be in in uh, virtually like this uh we might if, have to switch it to a, a, a bit more of a webinar form uh, but also to to mix it up uh, uh you know to have maybe presentations of, of, of areas of interest uh and and maybe in, in some others around open discussions uh, uh around topics um, there's a broad range of stakeholders that we've sort of identified. I think that's not exhaustive. Um, and if there's any, any others that, that uh, any of you think that should be part of this group or should, uh, might be interested, uh, feel free to extend an invitation to them. Um, have I missed anything there, Michael? I think that's about as much as I, I wanted to cover off in that part of it. Yeah, I thought, I thought the objective side of things would be good to go through that. Um, I guess th this group, we really wanted to establish um, different communication channels, um, obviously like the, the current forum we're in today, um, but obviously all other ways, whether it's email or um, Slack channels or whatever it may be to actually really start people sharing um, capabilities, um, whether that's tools, services and standards, which really allow people to really connect with one another around geospatial data tools and services and standards um, and to really start discussing some of the initiatives which are going on across the country. I think when we start looking at um, all the different geo work going on around Australia, um, it's really quite broad and even just between the earth and environment spaces and the human settlement areas, we've, we're sort of focusing on different areas. I guess we've well, typically because we, we focus on different data types and different tools and services and standards and Really, try, how do we start to bring this together, um, given the huge diversity, um, obviously in the earth and environment space, a huge amount of raster data, um, looking at sort of the Digital Earth Australia, work around the actual data cube, all the way through to some of the stuff happening in IoT and real-time sensing areas. Um, we understand there's huge diversity in this area, and I guess this is what we look in terms of opening up this space a little bit. Um, what are some of the geospatial data challenges what are some of the geospatial services challenges and what are some of the geospatial standards challenges at the moment? And really trying to share some of the methods which us as practitioners are really doing out there at the moment so that we can really learn and improve from each other and really innovate in our work that we're doing. Um, and as part of this, to then start moving towards some of the real, more, I guess, the, the larger communities around the country, whether it's say the Geo Ministerial Week coming up or whether it's part of say the Locate Conference or whether it's say through the Force 4G space, there's lots of different communities out there based on, I guess, the different aspects of the geospatial capabilities and areas of focus. And what we're really trying to do is trying to link groups together to really look at what are some areas where we can help one another and you know, really build innovation and you know, solid work in the, in, the, in the practice space. So that would be what I'd add to your discussion there, Kieran. 
So we might open it up for some, in, any comments on the objectives? Yeah, does anybody have any feedback at all that I'd like to provide, so. Um, this is Irina Bastrako from Geoscience Australia. So um, I probably start with the purpose rather than objectives. So quite strong focus at the moment and descriptions is on research sectors. And as uh, Kieran was saying, it's actually not just research, but trying to link research and gov government together. So maybe we need to put that there, like it's um, across research and government infrastructure and e sort of digital <laughs> um, sectors. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's quite important to uh, uh, state upfront in the purpose of that group. Great, thank you. And also in the document, just overall comments, are we going to uh, include information about current chairs of or co-chairs of this um, group? And one of the suggestions I had, so it's um, more co-chairs basically representing, I would say, research text at the moment. So I would suggest Andrew Whiting from uh, Just Science Australia to be additional co-chair representing government. And Andrew has very strong connections to FNCF and national maps and some of other spatial capabilities, infrastructures and data sets. Um, so maybe it's a good idea just to have uh, additional co-chair if uh, other group members not against it. Yeah, that sounds like a good suggestion. Yeah, we might look at getting a few more co-chairs in here. Yeah. Does anybody have any comments around the purpose space? Um, obviously, focusing on the research government sectors and involving people and the intent of the group. Does anybody have any comments around the broad, I guess, statement of purpose in the terms of reference? Uh, hi, this is Sanjeev calling from University of the Sunshine Coast. Can you hear me? Yes, hello. Hi, hi Sanjeev. Yeah. So basically, I teach uh, GIS and remote sensing. And uh, when you say geospatial capabilities, uh, it has to go to students also to develop the, some threshold capabilities in uh, geospatial science so that uh, they can use the data set more effectively and they understand the data set before actually using it. So we sh should have to set out some threshold which has to be understood and learned before one can start using geospatial data sets. So <laughs> does it make any sense? Means, uh, because say one of the key challenge which uh, I see as an educator in geospatial science is that it is very easy to open the data and start using it. But uh, it is more important to actually understand the data set before you start using it. And to do so, you need to have certain capabilities. And in other area, people call it as threshold capabilities. Hey, thanks, so, Sanjeev. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is my comment, yeah. Okay, thank you. And feel free to mark up the um, terms of reference document. I see some comments are going in at the moment. So if you would like to add any comments to any aspect of the document, um, please, go, please go with that. Any other comments? Um, the other aspect we're looking at is the objective and outcomes. Now, the outcome side of things um, is very interesting for us, um, coming in from I guess the federally funded project space, but um, we could look at this from lots of different perspectives. So anybody has any comments around the outcomes, that would be great if they'd like to share them. Hello. Um, I've got a comment about the terms of reference in general, which I'm wondering if there's a section which could describe, I guess, the process that we might achieve some of these challenges. So for example, with um, this type of virtual environment, obviously if you went to a conference, 
it's really all about connecting people and a lot of that connection comes through the talks and chats. I was wondering what people's thoughts are as to how this might work in this virtual environment where you've got, it's hard for people to connect. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Um, as with the ARDC, um, we're looking at unmerged technologies to engage. Um, I guess when we scroll, um, where are we going? We are looking at a whole bunch of different ways to connect. Um, obviously, the visual um, communication channel is great to have in regular meetings. And we are looking at um, other different avenues of interaction. Um, whether that's through workshops or events hosted at conferences across the country, or whether that is regular virtual um, meetings or catch-ups, workshops, that sort of thing. Um, now, from our perspective, we're, we're already currently doing a bit of this, but we're kind of also wanting to, I guess, build quite a bit of groundswell around this sort of thing. So I'm actually very interested in other people's perspectives on the call to see, well, how could this actually work? Um, whilst we, we do meet up at conferences and this sort of thing, we may end up still just circling our regular groups, which we've done before, you know, whether it's through e-research or through geo or e-sip or other different types of capabilities. Like we kind of want to break across and build bridges between these groups. So how do people see actually that working? Uh, uh, suggestions there probably is just to do presentations from different groups. So, for example, or oh, Sarina Batrakova again. So, I am chairing the Australian Metadata Working Group. So, I can talk um, about what we achieved within the last year or so. So, for example, we developed a new Australian Metadata Profile, which will be ENSLIC Metadata New Metadata Profile. So, it's one of those things. Uh, we also can present on location index uh, project, which is listed in the terms of reference as one of the uh, current initiatives. So probably we can uh, do different presentations uh, for people and recording them as well. So it's a shared resource. That's one of the suggestions. Um, hi, everyone. It's um, Andrew Whiting from GA. Um, Overall, I think the, the group is a really good idea and a really good concept. Um, I, I think just around this topic of how we communicate, I don't think we should limit um, in the terms of reference that our um, communication will be just virtual. I've seen um, a lot of other sectors um, having all these really fun events like the Geo Rabble events, the Geo Beers workshops and events, and I think that needs to be quite core to this because we are kind of loosely coupled and it needs to be semi-informal just so we can get some value out of it. Um, so I really think we should just remove that it's all virtual. I think virtual is a great mechanism to get informal quick meetings going, but we should have some sort of physical presence, whether or not it's in Canberra or distributed out, out around Australia. I would like to know um, with the membership or everyone online, where are we kind of all based? Are we mostly in Canberra or are we distributed <laughs> all around Australia? Australia. <laughs> I think it's a good question. Um, when you look at the introductions people have been writing in the Google Docs, um, we haven't actually put down the geographic location, but looking at the names and the places, um, we, are, we are definitely distributed across the country. Um, and we do have to consider um, see the location, but also the time dimension as well. Um, if people are coming in from Western Australia. So maybe there's an opportunity to put um, a location component. Um, yes, I, th I think someone's adding that to it. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so we can actually start to look at what are the different dimensions here, so. Um, Michael has a request to get the terms of reference on the screen because a few people are struggling to get into it. Melanie, is that something you could do? Thank you. Sorry, I'm just struggling to see where uh, we add in our details into the terms of reference doc.
So we've actually got a uh, separate document, Sandy. We've got a, a notes document. Um, so with the, the terms of reference doc is just the terms of reference and I'll just share the notes document now. Oh, thank you. And Perfect. You'll see, sorry, I thought this was circulated beforehand, but apologies. Um, this is where um, people are, are writing all the notes around what we're talking about. So um, from the actual introductions about why they're wanting to be here, all the way through to the actual terms of reference and some of the future agenda, agenda items. And people are starting to put some presentation ideas in the agenda items, um, future agenda items, and I think it's really good to see. Um, so please, uh, if you've got any ideas around that, if you've got a presentation idea for the future, um, please add it to the list in the notes. Fantastic, thank you. Right. So the next item we we're going to talk about was a statement and more looking at, well, we have an online presence which is being facilitated via the ARDC. Um, we have these regular communications and one of the items in the notes is around the communications, which, which we've already touched on. But if you do have any thoughts around communications, um, please add it to the notes. Um, and how subsequent meetings and how we can facilitate this actual community of practice. Um, whether that's through online meetings, presentations, which we've already discussed, we've got birds of further presentations coming up at here, research, other workshops associated with conferences, or at other local events as well. We may, when it actually comes to a the next community practice meeting, we may be able to hold, I guess, nodes, so to speak, so people can actually come in and attend a meeting with other people part of the community and share a space, whether it's the University of Melbourne or say ANU or CSIRO in Canberra or Flinders University in Adelaide. There may be opportunity to set up local nodes where people actually come together and get to know one another as well. So Karen, did you want to talk a little bit about the um, the actual agenda items? So it's starting to think about how do we then bring together ideas and possible speakers for subsequent meetings. Now I've opened up the invitation on the notes page for people to list uh, future agenda items. But did you want to add anything to that, Kieran, at all, to actually think about how we're going to structure this, particularly around the chairing of the meetings and how the actual I guess the governance side of things is going to be performed. Yeah, so um, I believe maybe Kieran may be frozen. Other people are saying that. Um, yeah, okay. I'll just send him a quick message. Sorry about that. Um, oh, he's just reconnecting. Okay, um, so the item, next item on the agenda, we're looking at um, a discussion around agenda items. Now, I guess I wanna throw it out to people on the call. Um, given the diversity of geospatial capabilities and the people have actually already added their line to the table, which is looking fantastic, there are quite a few directions which we could obviously head in around presentations and this sort of thing. Um, as I said at the start, some of the areas which I was mentioning was around IoT, 5G, real-time sensing, or all the way through to, um, I guess, more the raster based satellite or aerial imagery type analysis. Now, um, Lee is also added onto the page here looking at standards and processes. And I guess we've got opportunity to really look at, well, how do we set the agenda for meetings and how do we move forward? Um, is it gonna be consensus or are we just gonna obviously lay out an agenda or a calendar for the rest of the year to say this person is speaking on this date and try to coordinate things with, in other channels as well. But how do people wish to see this actually be acted out. 
how do they want to see it be executed, I guess, across the country? Hello, <laughs> no one's talking up. Um, Thanks, I guess, yeah. I guess I would like to see um, a, a little bit of a mix. So if we've got particular meetings that are coming up that we might have in one meeting where the focus is on connecting groups, so that might take something more in the form of quick overviews of what everyone's doing or perhaps tables where people fill in information about technologies they're working on or various different ways that we can get information to work out commonalities. And then I would see other meetings where we might have some sort of more like keynote speeches or longer form speeches from um, certain technology groups that other people rely on or, you know, something like that. I think that's good. I think mixing it up is is a great way of doing it. Otherwise, it's just going to be the next presentation and the next presentation. Um, how do we promote interaction between people? Um, is it just going to be this keynote? Are we going to have a discussion document which is put forward? I think my experience in working with committees um, within the different spaces has been that people can sort of drop off the edge. Um, to feel like they're kind of not part of the community. So it's basically how do we really promote that and offer different ways of interacting um, someone mentioned obviously working together on say a standard or something like that. That's great. Um, but I guess the overall um, purpose of this is to really, is really around the community aspect to really have this knowledge sharing interaction between people. So um, I guess people want to maybe present some ideas around how we can think about interaction moving forward. Um, and some of the things that Eric just discussed around um, breaking away from a traditional, well, also to mix it up a little bit, traditional sort of keynote presentation to start thinking about, well, someone's already mentioning about Slack, maybe that's too synchronous, maybe someone wants more of an asynchronous approach. Um, yeah, some, some sort of ideas on this would be great to help us move forward. Sorry, Mike. Uh, so, yeah, just the thing I was wanting, saying just before I dropped out um, was uh, what I'd like to know is, you know, how do we, how do we award and how do we work out which agenda, what to put on the agenda across the group? Um, when we started off, we were thinking a very small group, but this is, uh, we've already got a, a, a fair bit of interest and, and I assume they're gonna grow. So I think we need to have some sort of method to, to work out what topics are of most interest. And, and in a way that probably doesn't uh, take away the opportunity for the, the smaller groups to have what they what's interesting to them as well. So I'm interested to hear thoughts and comments around that. Um, Andrew here um, from GA. It might be worth us pulling together a bit of a regi uh, registry or just a whole heap of dot points on potential topics, and then we can pull uh, pull together some doodle polls leading into each um, meeting, where everyone can vote on what they would be most interested in. Yeah, so I, Irina here as well. So I guess my question is, um, would we have as an objective actually to, not, not, not just to share our initiatives, but maybe to collaborate on certain aspects of our objectives and then present them to the group back? So this way we probably will be able to form a smaller sort of collaborative groups uh, working on a particular topic. I think something that that sort of thing would be be really nice to see um, as as a byproduct of of this work. Um, I'm not you know I'm not entirely sure if that um, how much we want to do that directly as part of of this group. Uh, but if you know coming together here is we we realize those like you know areas that we want to collaborate on and and then take that and then come back in that would be great um uh is my initial thoughts but you know is that do do, do it i think there's an open question in there as well as saying you know does this want to be like an overarching point uh here uh for those kind of activities as well i haven't got strong thoughts on that 
Um, can I ask a question in terms of um, how we're going to keep um, sort of records of uh, shared techniques or documents or whatever else we want to share? So is it going to occur through um, AIDC uh, space, like they are facilitating the, uh, the work of the community of practice and they will have some sort of web presence there, so we can actually store links and they can go back to them if needed. So how is it going to be organized? Hi, I'm it's Julia. Julia, we're going to have um, a space on our website for uh, this particular community of practice, and so any resources that or outputs we will put up publicly if it's agreed. Oh, cool. Just um, Andrew here. Um, some of the mechanisms we use through ICSM, ANZLIC, and all those different um, whole government communities is we will generally have a informal um, landing page, more like a confluence space, where people can do their agendas, you can manage your terms of reference or um, put down you know, key topics or discussions. It's more like your informal blog. So we have that mechanism, but we also have then the formal publication space. So we might need to consider how we can um, have maybe two things running. Yeah, it's uh, Lee here. Um, one of the issues which we are going to have to think uh, carefully about right from the start is the sort of person we're going to have uh, as a member of the group. And I would be surprised if we didn't have a fairly wide mix of people, but we need to be cognizant of that in terms of outcomes and communications, at least. Yeah, I agree. Simon, I was just wondering if you had any thoughts on that as well. Sorry, Karen. I'm um, just uh, sort of listening and uh, watching at the moment. We've, you know, obviously I've been involved in a number of, of attempts in the past at pulling together groups like this, um, uh, having... Uh, They've hiccuped along a little bit, um, you know, having a, a clear goal and some 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 outcomes in mind would, um, um, you know, perhaps some products in mind <laughs> helps focus things. Yeah. So perhaps we should add an extra item to the notes page for um, the outcomes. Um, people would like to write down. Um, I guess maybe some, may, maybe yeah. outputs actually, outputs. Michael, rather than outcomes. Um, yeah. You know, specific products. You know, a paper. Uh, um, yeah. Compilation of best practices. Um, survey of um, tools and technologies, um, data endpoints, those kinds of things. Um, you know, you know, some of that stuff is, is, is available through the services that ARDC runs and other places, but I suspect that, uh, you know, because they're primarily uh, focusing on indexing sort of archived or repository type things that 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 they they don't catch all the things which are um, um, perhaps a little less stable a little bit more experimental oh, that's great thanks Simon I, I guess sorry just Andrew again um, being a community of practice um, let's just make a clear distinction early that we're not a working group. So I think being a community of practice, if we're gonna start talking about um, expected outcomes and deliverables, maybe it's just a registry of knowledge, for example. Um,
But if we're going to actually start talking about specific work activities, well, that's kindly that's quite different to what the terms of reference kind of reflect at the moment. Yeah, no, that I agree, and Andrew, that that's very much the case. That this is a, a working, uh, not a working group. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, it, it, you know the the discussions here can't lead to forming a, a working group um, that that comes back with things, and and this can become a, a, a more coordinating point for those things. Um, so I think that that's something that's worth considering, and 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 would be a, a useful outcome uh, if the discussion here leads to um, some some activity that produces an outcome, uh, but that's not necessarily the goal of this group to, to generate that. I think, I think they're very, um, very valuable contributions there to actually delineate things quite clearly from the start. So thank you, Andrew, for identifying those things. Um, one of the things, um, which we've got here, we've got quite a large list of future agenda items coming out now. Um, a lot of presentations, which are fantastic. Um, looking, um, I guess we'll have to go away and have a chat with the AIDC in terms of capability, in terms of the online presence. Um, I think the Confluence idea sounds, sounds fantastic in terms of having a landing page. People can come to from the group, learn about the group and see some of the, some, some of the founda some foundation documents in this space. Um, Looking at some of the, um, we've got some questions appearing here in the notes page around some of the upcoming activities which we've got on the horizon for, I guess, the initial steps. Um, and one of those is a birds of a feather presentation, um, which Kieran and I and Guru from TAN are doing at the e-research conference. Um, just wondering if there are any other side events or subsequent meetings which anyone would like to add to the notes um, where this community of practice can also be involved. Um, so I've added one there around e-research. There's also another round, another one around E2SIP, which is gonna be held as part of the geo-ministerial in Canberra between on the week of the 4th and 9th of November. But if anyone has any other potential, I guess, ways of grounding the community of practice around events, um, please add that to the notes page because it's one, one of the good things we're looking at at the moment is really trying to find some of these local activities where people can start to come together and put you know, a name to a face or a face to a name or whatever it is to really start these, um, these connections from forming. So on that topic also, um, I did want to know, find out, you know, how frequently people felt we, we should meet or, you know, how much would be too much or how much would be too little. So we're looking at uh, every month, every two months, every two weeks. Um, what are some of the ideas um, that are out there at the moment? around the commitment and how long we should actually engage for in terms of this, I guess, process. We're doing it, say the presentations for an hour once a month and then having um, catch-ups via obviously Slack or via other, other communication channels more regularly. I guess once we do have the list of members, um, we can start to think about the community itself and the different themes of people within the community or the different areas of interest. Um, but we really have to sort of start talking about, well, how much do people want to engage in this space? Um, which is a little bit difficult when we first start out, starting out, but it's quite an important process for us to think about, well, for the next meeting, when do we want to do it? How long is it going to be? Um, and how are we going to do it? So any ideas around duration and engagement would be great. Yeah, I agree. It's really important to understand that um, because pulling together such meetings is actually quite an overhead. Um, so any feedback on that's really important.
So it's just Andrew again. Should we just aim to pull together maybe the first um, formal meeting in maybe four to six weeks? I know it's a little bit of time, but we've got a bit of admin to pull together before then and just see what kind of, how does the meeting go? And then from then determine whether or not we should have one in four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks after that. Michael, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I agree. I agree that we should um, look at possibly in, in a month's time, looking at some of the responses coming through in the chat window in the, in the Google Doc. Um, some people are saying monthly or, or two monthly, so maybe we could look at having the first meeting or the first presentation with a discussion in about between four and six months' time and have it to run for one hour duration um, from what I can see here. Um, if anybody has any other thoughts, please add them to the chat. Um, And we can uh, at least just start to pin down what our next meeting might look like. And then as we start drawing some of these materials together and how do we then proceed? Obviously looking at some of the events which we're gonna have, um, are gonna be before four to six weeks time, such as e-research in, in Brisbane. People that are going along to that, they may wanna network and get to know one another. Um, there's other events there around the New South Wales ACT SSSI conference the 25th to the 27th of September. People might want to connect around that. So I guess we have obviously the next meeting of this community practice, but there may be other events leading up to that where we'll actually connect and be linking in with, with people as well. Um, Saren's just put out a question there um, around the presentation to start off with, um, whether we actually vote for a topic of interest. You know, we've got a whole bunch of topics coming through from people. We've got stuff looking at the ANSLEC metadata work. We've got um, the 2026 Spatial Industry Transformation and Growth Agenda. Um, we've got ideas around um, uh, the gaps in technology, some of the digital twin work. Um, would people like to see that we actually put stuff together almost like an on-conference style way of doing things? We will put all the ideas up there and we vote for them? Or how, how would people like to see that we actually put out um, the agenda for the next meeting? Do we just decide autocratically and say, this is what's gonna happen? Well, that really wouldn't be much of a community. So we're trying to figure out how do we actually do things properly. So I think some sort of voting. Yeah, I'm some sort of voting. Okay, well then yep. we, we um, can, yep. Yeah, I, I don't know if we are able to do that here or whether we need to take that offline. Yeah, I think people are still writing. That. Yep. Maybe just a, a suggestion, um, rather than try and determine the, the first formal presentation, why don't we attempt in the next um, three to four weeks to establish the formal web presence, maybe the informal web presence, um, such as like a confluence or whatnot. And then once we've got that in place, we could either report back to the working group or in the interim put out a doodle poll so people have a bit of time to think about it offline. Yeah, I agree with that, definitely. Um, that's something that Kieran and I will be working with uh, Julia and Melanie from ARDC on establishing. So um, I think, thanks very much for that suggestion. I think it's an important one to get things set up and have a, a place where people can see all the, the links and this sort of stuff rather than getting, we're starting to get lost with all stuff. Even though it's day one, we've already got three different working documents out there at the moment. So it'd be good if we had this stuff um, properly linked from one central landing page. Definitely. And because like even from that, we've got a lot of great things we can present on definitely from um, Geoscience Australia, but we just got to think about timing as well. So even if those names up there around Simon Graham, myself or um, the Gazetteer, definitely would love to speak about it. Um, but we just do need to have a bit of time to think about whether or not we've got the capacity in the next six weeks to pull it together. So having the forum where we can actually document it, vote on it, discuss it, gives us that time to, to get ready for it. 
great, thank you. All right. So I think that's most of the things we needed to cover off in, in this meeting, Michael. Yeah, I think we just covered off the, the introductory side of things um, and really what we want to do here. And so these documents are going to be up there for people to add and modify over the coming week or two. And then we're going to start funneling all this into some sort of landing page or a virtual environment where people can actually then start to interact with it. Yeah. Any last comments from anybody at all? Before we uh, close off today's meeting, today was very, very much a first introduction meeting, getting people's interest in the space. And we've already got a huge amount of um, stuff captured in the working documents there. Um, and it, it's really encouraging to see um, people are passionate about this space. And um, some of the, the types of things people are writing and why am I here and what do I want to get out of this, some of them are parallel, some of them are actually quite different. So actually putting this together and sitting down and, and and analyzing it. It's going to be what we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks um, to then get this landing page established and start thinking about how we're going to communicate this information moving forward. Um, so if anybody's got any further comments, please uh, please jump in now um, before we uh, move on to, I guess, the, the closing of the meeting. Yeah, Michael and Karen, thanks for pulling this together. It's just Andrew from GA. Um, if you do need anything in the interim, just um, reach out and I'm more than happy to give you a hand. Thanks, mate. Anybody else got anything else they'd like to add? Yeah, Michael and Kieran, John here from La Trobe University. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, I was just wondering as well, I, I don't have a huge uh, background in GIS as such. Um, this was just recommended to me to, to join, so I hope that it's um, you know appropriate for me to join. Um, I think that I'll learn a lot from it, but uh, just with, um, you know, with, with the uh, terms of reference, all that sort of thing, I was just thinking in terms of membership and, um, you know, whether there's any uh, stipulations or, or, you know, rules regarding that, that was all. No, I think we want to keep it, keep it relatively open. Um, we, we don't, we want anyone who is working in that space or identifies themselves as working in that space, we want to keep it open for them that, you know, if, if you're part of that community or identify yourself as part of the community, I think you're more than welcome to join. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, I'd be nervous if this was seen as a, a straight GIS group because um, I don't work with GIS. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I think many of us on the call, yeah, we're sort of working in the infrastructure end or on the standard side. Yeah, it's a lot broader than just GIS. So yeah. Anybody else has any comments I'd like to um, to add? Going once, going twice. So thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining, and and it was really great to see the the level of interest in this. Uh, I think Michael and I have, and, and uh, good friends in the RDC have uh, our work cut out for the next couple of weeks to, to digest all, all of this and, and try and uh, plan out the, the next, uh, next meeting. Uh, so once again, thank you everybody. Um, is there anything, Michael, is there anything else you wanted to add in the course of things? Yeah, I think I'd just sort of extend that invitation out to others um, as well. Um, if, if you know of other people, obviously there's a few events happening between now and when an next communication is going to be. If there are other people who you meet or who may be interested in a community practice around geospatial capabilities in Australia, um, please share the information with them. Um, and... Uh, I guess, as I said at the start, the breadth of this area is rather large and we're not wanting, not wanting to start off by delimiting the space and, and, and trying to constrain it down to particular areas. Um, we actually want to keep this very, you know, across the whole geospatial domain at this stage um, to really sort of build a community um, to keep this moving forward. So I guess keep pushing out the invitations if you know of anybody who might be interested. Um, it'd be great to um, obviously build up these nodes in different states um, so people can actually get to know one another, um, whether that, you know, obviously based on the document which everyone is seeing, 
Um, I, I'm able to look through myself and say, well, okay, there's some really good stuff happening in Victoria down here in different areas. So I guess this itself is, is a really important resource for us to start developing the community and looking more broadly across the country. So, um, but otherwise, yeah, thanks so much for being here. Um, it's a great first meeting. I said, we have come in just wanting to get feedback on it to start thinking about how we can move forward. And from what Simon was saying, um, any lessons learned from other types of working groups or committees in this space anybody wants to put forward, whether that's a technolo technological solution or a communication method, which may or may not have worked. Um, also aspects of minuting, putting out minutes and notes. Um, there's quite a few different aspects of this. I think quite a, few, quite a few people on the call here have had a lot of experience in having participation in these sorts of uh, groups, but how do we actually really move forward and engage with this um, the best we can? It'd be great to know about that. So feel free to keep updating the documents, um, sending out the links and sharing the opportunity to others. And um, yeah, I think from my side, Karen, that's probably enough for today. Uh, we're just wrapping up now at five minutes to 12 in the Eastern States. So um, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks. And feel free to get in touch by email to Kieran and myself. Um, we're very open, um, want to encourage um, participation, and um, we're looking forward to, to getting something up and running, a landing page, and working with the IDC to start this uh, community practice. So thanks so much for today. We look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks. Nicole, cheers.